disruptive innovation, or what used to be called disruptive technologies, is when you have a technology that has the potential to change market leadership. In 2001, the president of Blockbuster said, we understand that broadband is developing, but we know that people love to browse for movies. It's a social experience, and people like coming into the store. And frankly, the broadband is so far away from being able to deliver uh, downstream videos into the home that we don't see it as a threat. People want to go and watch a movie today. They don't want to wait three hours to download it and watch it. Now, there's nothing there that is factually inaccurate, but the mistake was they never took the time to say, yeah, but at what point in the future will download technology allow you to possibly download a movie in, say, 10 minutes, and it might actually be a threat? Products are just physical embodiments of service delivery mechanisms, right? And, and so what is, the, what is the solution that you provide to your customer? And I think most people from a product background, you spend a lot of time thinking that way anyway. But if you really understand what outcomes and what solutions you provide, then you can think about, well, what else is possibly threatening that business? What is the end state your customers are trying to get to? Because really all we're doing is providing a means to that end state. And we're really talking about competition for the means to that end state. The more you abstract your business, which becomes a little bit intangible, I think that the more you learn about what business you're in. Who in the watch market is thinking of cell phones as a threat? But if you define your business as we're in the telling time business and anything else that could t potentially tell time and be kept on the person is a potential threat. And I think by 2000, 2001, it ought to be on the C-suite's radar. How many of us have worked on products that actually high perform, they do their job, but they weren't accepted in the market, they failed in the marketplace. You're like, hey, it's an effective product and it failed. What the hell's going on, right? It's very common. So we call this barriers to new product adoption, the psychology adoption. A lot of it comes down to the behavioral economics of people have a status quo bias and there's very high switching costs. And we tend to look at switching costs mostly from a financial perspective and we don't realize that there's a lot of psychological drivers in terms of why we stick with the status quo. It's a big thing we talk about in new product development in the, in the coursework is how you actually overcome barriers to adoption.